Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Let's stop right there. Just We're going to start over because that, that first line just has had me for a while. Let's start it over and say it together. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the needy. Provide yourselves with money bags that do not grow old, with treasure in the heavens that does not fail, where no thief approaches and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Good stuff. Think about this. This week, as I was, it struck me. I was David. Actually, David should be leading this meditation. He he preached this. Uh, text this morning at uh, Northside Baptist Church. He's been filling in uh, once a month there for a little while uh, in the interim for them. And um, what a blessed text. Um, Fear not, little flock. It is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. I think the thing that struck me in in thinking about this is just the graciousness of of, of this word to us as believers. Think about how consoling and comforting it is for Jesus to speak to us in this way. Um, we'll back up and look at Fear Not Little Flock and talk about some things there, but it is your Father's good pleasure. The very thing that the disciples were wrangling about with one another about who would be greatest, he says, Listen, it's your Father's good pleasure. I had to, as David and I were thinking, or I was, we were both working separately this week, and as I do several times a week, I go barging into where he's working. I'm like, hey, man, I had this just, uh, I said, you know, at Chick-fil-A, he worked for Chick-fil-A while he's at college in uh, Louisville. I said, you know, the thing about Chick-fil-A that makes it so successful, I think, it, you could say it's the food, but it's the atmosphere, I think, of service, really. Above all, you can, you can pick up on the Christian vibe, not from the music that's playing, but from the attitudes that prevail. I mean, they've embedded a Christian culture in their service culture that it just, it's striking. Probably if you've uh, gotten, uh, your, if you recollect back to your first experience with Chick-fil-A, I can almost promise you that the thing that probably set you back more than anything if not on the first visit, maybe it was the second, was for some, every person that served you to say what? It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. It's a humbling thing to hear that from another person who's just served you. You know, there's so many places you could go and they can bear You feel like, I don't know if you're like me, sometimes I feel like I'm the one saying thank you. And I don't have a problem saying thank you, but I'm like, does anybody teach their employees to say thank you for being with us today or, or whatever? But when another human being tells you it is my pleasure to serve you and, and act like they mean it is really sincerely moving. But this verse, Jesus is telling us it is the Father's good pleasure. <laughs> I can promise you if you just take a little time to meditate on that, think about the way we, the way people often make a distinction. Uh, we're, we're very modalist in the way we look at the Trinity. And one of the ways that we see it abused the most is this. People act as if Jesus is the one who is tender and loving and God the Father is somehow distant, austere, demanding, unbending. And yet Jesus says, Fear not, little flock. For it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. How quick are we to fret and fear and fall into fits of despair about all manner of things? As believers, why do disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, why do we do this? Sometimes I think we we fall into this trap of fear and fits of despair and all these kinds of things for a couple reasons. First, because we are so few. Right? 
I mean, that's what he's addressing here. Fear not, little flock. As it relates to the world, we can feel like we're a, we are a... Uh, we are, and we are. It's not... The, hey, listen, the fewness is not just... It's not just an illusion. It's not just a feeling. Jesus says that there is a, a straight gate and a narrow way that leads to life, and few there are there that find it. There's something about Sundays that should uh, we should long for when we get together. Even when I'm studying Scripture, it, it is good in the study. It's good in the morning when we sing about it. This weekend, I had. Several hours by myself as Sheila was over babysitting and it just gave me this quiet house on a rainy day. Uh, apart from barking dogs, it was just, it was just me and the Lord and uh, just the privilege of t- taking a hymnal and just to look through it and sing out loud to the Lord and be reminded of, of things that we hold dear. Um, we need to remind her. But what I'm saying is that those times are special, but there's nothing as special in my week, and I hope not as yours, as gathering together. As hearing one another's voice, as seeing people come in to study and sit under the Word of God in Sunday school classes and small groups to pray for one another. Listen, it's easy to be, it's easy to fear because of our littleness. The fewness of followers. And then, and the numerous, when we look around the world today, we can feel that there are numerous, there are few followers and numerous scoffers. Many adversaries. Many haters of the truth. And, and it causes us to fear. Sometimes uh, our, our fears can arise from the fear that we don't have God's favor. That it is not His pleasure to serve me. And I don't know about you, but we can feel, I think Willie Nelson had a title album recently called God's Problem Child. <laughs> I think some of us can feel that way about ourselves before God. Like, I must be a burden. But Jesus says, fear not, little flock, for it is the, your father's, your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. To give it to you. It wasn't that what Jesus was, the Lord God was teaching the people of Israel this morning in Deuteronomy chapter 26. He says, listen, this, this land is gift. Everything is gift. And you're to come and, and worship me with joy over the fact that of God's bounty, of his blessing and goodness. Look at where he's brought you from. We can be like Jacob, though. Remember I gave you Jacob this morning. Jacob, in the midst of all his things, he says, all these things are against me. I think I've got a disposition like that. Do you? Where I can, as a couple of things accumulate, and all of a sudden I'm, in a, I'm thinking all these things are against me. But God's Word says He's working all things together for our good. Fear not, little flock. He, he answers fears with this sentence that is a golden assurance. So we need to remind ourselves of a little a couple of things. Little flock. It's, God's people have been a little flock from the beginning. He made a people where there were no people. He had no one. And the Lord looked and, 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 and worked his wonder in creating a people where there were no people. Even today there are many possessors. There are many members. There are, there, there are probably a lot more professors than there are possessors and it's always been this way but God in Christ says that we should expect sufferings now but our glory has been to be revealed Colossians 3 4 says when Christ who is your life appears then you shall appear with him in glory you're a little flock now but you will appear with him in glory this passage tells us not only that we are not it embraces our littleness and our fewness. And it declares our, the favor that we've received from God. We are, second thing I want us to see here is we're tenderly loved. Graciously served. It is my pleasure. Graciously served. God, uh, you know, we see this in the ministry of Jesus where he dons the, 
the garb of a servant and washes the disciples' feet. Serves them. He serves us. We're graciously served by the Father. It's not just the, it's not just the Son that serves us. The Father has served us. And He doesn't do it unwillingly. He doesn't do it grudgingly. He doesn't do it coldly. Um, Isaiah says that He rejoices. I love, I love this picture. In, um, you don't have to turn there, but in um, Isaiah... Where does he say, I'll sing over you like a, I had it in my mind in chapter 60. Rise, shine, lift up your eyes. It's those latter passages. Well, it left me right now. 61. For Zion's sake, it's Isaiah 62. For Zion's sake, this is God the Father. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet. Until her righteousness goes forth as brightness and her salvation as a burning torch, the nations shall see your righteousness and all the kings your glory. You shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall... Be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken. Your land shall no more be termed desolate, but you shall be called. My delight is in her, and your land married. For the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your sons marry you. As the bridegroom, listen to this, rejoices over the bride, so Shall your God rejoice over you? It just gets better and better till you go to the end of Isaiah. But I just want you to see that we are tenderly loved. Let me ask you, are we members of this little flock? If so, then be not afraid. Exceedingly great and precious promises of God have been made to us through Jesus Christ and sealed with his precious blood. He gives a striking command along with all of this. And we should not dismiss it. He says, Fear not, little flock, it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions, give to the needy, provide yourselves with money bags that do not grow old, with a treasure in the heavens that does not fail where no thief approaches and no moth destroys it's a striking command about valuation it's not it's not about just totally get uh, ridding ourselves of possessions the rest of the scriptures will not will, will not suffice to do it, it strikes us in in this way but it, it's saying like, uh, we are to sell anything that stands in the way of our devotion to Christ. We are to give in, 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 in order uh, to share Christ and to show Christ because we have been given so much. We are to provide for ourselves treasure that has a certain and secure valuation. It was good to sing in that last song we sang. We talk about value and worth. And here's the thing, folks. Um, it's um, if you if you read economics and, and this kind of thing, I don't understand it all. But valuations are very um, subjective, if you will, I guess. But our value, our valuation has been set. It's secure. It's not like some. Uh, newfangled cryptocurrency out there that's up one day and down the next and is this real or is this some kind of hoax we don't have to wonder about that um, with Christ he says he's saying obtain by faith that which may never grow old it may never be lost 
it, may, it will never be devalued. In fact, I think the opposite is true. The worth of what we have in Christ will, will out. I don't think we'll be able to. I don't even have words for it to, to estimate. To, to try to describe what that will be like. I, where, where I has not seen nor ear heard all the things that the Father has prepared for them that love him. This passage does cause us to come as we meditate on it tonight to ask us, what do we, what do we love and treasure most? What do we love and treasure most? It'll, it will show up in, in uh, what we fear, what we fret about. But when we find ourselves fearing and fretting, it's good to come back to these verses and commit to memory Jesus' words to the disciples, Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. God knows where our treasure is, our heart will be also. He doesn't need us to sell our He doesn't need us to sell our possessions. We might need to rid ourselves of some things that are stealing uh, first place in our lives from the Lord. There's a way to hold on. God, God sees He's given us all good things to enjoy. Um, and, and so as our hearts are attuned to Him, and our hearts, let me just remind you your heart's just like mine and it's like an instrument <laughs> and it gets out of tune <laughs> it needs it needs to be tuned regularly and this is why we gather Titus 2 says for the grace of God has appeared bringing salvation for all people training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age, waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify himself, purify for himself a people for his own possession who are zealous for good works. Um, the things that God's blessed us with are, are means that we can share and show uh, where our where our treasure is and and who our Savior is. And so, uh, I, I pray that if you haven't started meditating on this little passage of Scripture, that you'll just uh, take it in, um, commit to memory, put it on your dash. I probably got four or five of these cards floating around. Just carry it around in your pocket, pull it out, read it. Uh, meditate on it, even if you don't ever commit it to memory, meditating on it will help you immensely.